Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll talk about how to efficiently farm with the Bard and Clown class in order to level up into the Minstrel 3rd job in no time. We'll discuss the most important stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, farming spots, and tips needed to maximize the farming capabilities of the Bard and Clown class. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding on how to level up faster to the Minstrel 3rd job. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, we'll start with the stat build. Since this build is focused on grinding, we will only put points and attributes that can increase physical attack. The most important stat to pump first is dexterity as it increases ranged physical attack. However, since the farming skills of Bart consume tons of SP, you also need to add points on intelligence for faster SP recovery. Int can also increase physical attack when the int switch runes are activated. There's no need to put points on Vit or Agi for survivability, since this is just a farming build and our priority is to one-hit mobs with high damage output. However, if you feel the need to add Vit or Agi for increased HP or Flea, it is up to you. Next, let's discuss the most important skills to get. Take note that some of the skills can only be used when you have a dancer party mate near you. These are called ensemble skills. For the archer skills, you should allocate points on Level 10 Vulture's Eye for increased range and hit. Level 10 Owl's Eye for plus 10 dex. Level 10 Elemental Arrow for plus 30 attack. And lastly, get level 10 Arrow Shower since the damage of the Minstrel skill Raging Storm is activated by the damage and level of Arrow Shower. For the Bard skills, you may get level 10 Instrument Attack as this will be your primary farming skill. It has a long range and fast cast delay which greatly increases farming efficiency. Do take note that you can only use this skill when using a musical instrument. Then get level 10 Use Musical Instrument for additional attack when using an instrument weapon. Next, a lot points and level 10 Mr. Gold is rich. This is the only ensemble skill that is useful when farming since it grants higher EXP to teammates within an area. However, this skill is still buggy as it doesn't activate automatically when you put it on auto. As for the remaining 10 points, allocation is up to you. You may get momentary adaptation to stop a solo or ensemble skill, but this can actually be done by just unequipping then equipping again your musical instrument or by moving out of the ranges of the ensemble skill. For the clown skills, you should prioritize getting Level 10 Virtuous Poem which is a solo skill that decreases variable cast time and increases SP region depending on your total int attribute. This is an important skill for farming to ensure that you have unlimited SP pool. Next, put points on level 10 musical instrument proficiency to further increase your damage output. Then get Arrow Vulcan which is another single target farming skill that deals higher damage compared to instrument attack. Choosing between instrument attack and Arrow Vulcan depends whether you can consistently one-hit mobs. It is easier to shift one-hit kill with Arrow Vulcan than instrument attack since it has higher damage modifiers. In addition, there is a rune that increases attack by 3 for every 10 SP remaining when the damage of Arrow Vulcan is being calculated. However, in terms of farming speed, instrument attack is superior since its cast delay and cooldown is shorter than that of Arrow Vulcan. Hence, just use instrument attack if you can already one-hit your target mobs. Next, get level 5 Don't Hold Me Back to allow movement when using ensemble skills. And lastly, a lot of remaining 5 points and level 5 Encore to reduce SP cost when repeating the same solo or ensemble skill. Once you've reached Job Breakthrough, you may allocate the additional skill points on the following. Level 20 Use Musical Instrument and Level 15 Musical Instrument Proficiency for plus 10% damage increase and plus 5% attack respectively. Then, a lot points on level 15 Mr. Gold is rich to have 100% increase in job and base EXP gain. Please note that your dancer partner should also max his skill to get a full 100% increase in EXP. And lastly, you may get level 20 Elemental Arrow for higher attack, since there are runes that give free attack per level of Elemental Arrow. However, if you're going to use Raging Storm for farming as a minstrel, you should put points on level 20 Arrow Shower instead. As for the breakthrough of the Arrow Vulcan skill, getting it is only needed if you still can't one-hit the mobs you're farming. Now let's go to runes. Runes are vital for the Bard and Clown class as these increase the damage output of Instrument Attack and Arrow Vulcan. For the Instrument Attack build, you may follow this rune path. 
The minimum requirement is 126,300 contribution and 258 gold medals. This path activates all the instrument attack runes which increase damage by 8% each and reduces SP consumption during a performance. Other runes unlock are Dex, Int, Int Switch, and Elemental Arrow runes. As for the Arrow Vulcan build, you may follow this rune path. The minimum requirement is 176,550 contribution and 342 gold medals. This path activates the 3 Arrow Vulcan Arcane runes which give a total of plus 3 attack for every 10 SP remaining, and the 3 Arrow Vulcan Empower runes which grants a total of plus 18% Arrow Vulcan damage. Other runes unlock are Dex, Int, Int Switch, and Elemental Arrow runes. Take note that only one Mr. Gold upgrade rune is included in both rune paths. This increases drop EXP earned by an extra 3% when using Mr. Gold is rich. If you're going to use this ensemble skill for farming with a dancer partner, then you need additional 6,600 contribution and 44 gold medals to activate 3 more Mr. Gold upgrade runes. If you have remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby attack and SP runes. Up next, let's dive into the equipment and card set that you need to prepare. In general, we need to equip items and cards to increase physical attack, dexterity, range attack, ignore defense, and physical penetration to inflict higher damage output. It is also essential to get items that increase int and SP region for SP sustainability. For weapons, a double-slotted oriental loot is the most suitable for farming. This is the only musical instrument that can be used by bards and clowns. Upgrading it to tier 4 and refining it to plus 5 is mandatory when farming with Arrow Vulcan due to the additional attack it gives. As for the enchantment, you should aim to have the 4th enchant morale for ignore death or arch for range attack. As for weapon cards, it will depend on the monsters you're farming. Use an appropriate element, size, or race card to boost damage. As an example, if you're farming or play the Witches of Earth element, medium size, and demi human race, then you can inlay your weapon with two of each or a combination of the following cards Memblood card, Skeleton Worker card, and Hydra card. The Reign of Arrow card is only useful once you've become a minstrel, as it increases the damage of Arrow Shower, which then increases the damage of Raging Storm. Next, for the armor, the best option would be a tier 3 tights with Arch or Morale 4th enchantment. As for the armor card, you may use the Archer Skeleton Star card for additional attack. You may also use a Moonex Star card for more Ignore Death if the monster you are farming has a defense stat that is greater than 300. For the offhand, you may use either a plus 10 or a plus 15 tier 4 Niles bracelet for more range damage, or a Rosa bracelet when fighting against higher death monsters. As for the offhand card, you can inlay a card that increases damage to monsters with certain elements. As an example, equipping a Draco card increases damage to Earth monsters by 5%, perfect for farming the Orc Lady. Another option is a Year of the Big Blessing card, which increases base EXP gain from killing monsters by 3%. Up next for the garments, the best option is a Tier 4 plus 12 Ancient Cape as it gives additional ignore death and attack. Then inlay a Toad card for a plus 4 dex, or a New Year Blessing card which increases job EXP gain from killing monsters by 3%. For foot gears, we have the Rune Boots which gives plus 3% attack and faster movement speed. Then for the foot gear cards, equip an Agira card or Sohi card if you're having problems with SP sustainability. If not, then you may use a Unit 01 card from the EVA event which gives plus 10 attack and plus 2 dex. For accessories, these are the top suggestions. First, we have a Tier 9 Lunar Bruce for additional attack, dex, int, and SP region. This is also relatively cheap and easier to slot. Second is the Materials Leash which gives higher attack compared to the Luna Brooch, although this is more expensive to upgrade and slot. Third is the Tier 3 Gloss for additional attack and deck stat which is also good as a starting accessory. And lastly, we have the Dog Tooth Gloss which is a final tier upgrade of the gloves. It is the best endgame accessory for minstrels at plus 12 refinement and max tier due to the huge damage modifier. However, this is the most expensive out of all the options. As for accessory cards, you may inlay a Zipper Burst Star card for a plus 3% attack, Zerum card for plus 4 dex and plus 1 int, or any damage modifier card. Examples are the Kaho card for Earth Element monsters, 
the Ultraman card for Proof and Demon Monsters, and the Scorpion card for Plant Monsters. Lastly for the headgears, these are the suggested items. For the head, a cheap but really good starting gear is the Cat Ear Berry. You may also use the Ice Apple from the Gingerbread City Quest or the Orb Doll Hat for plus 4% base and job EXP from killing monsters. For headwear cards, you may use an Andre Star card for higher damage. If your SP drains rapidly, you may use an Incubus card for SP region. For the face, use a Dragon Skill Stripe for more int and dex or Nut on Head for plus 5% ignore death. You may also equip a Hawking Mask when farming Orc Lady. For the mouth, we have the Blowgun or the Spike Scarf when farming Orc Lady. For the back, equip a Quiver or a Devil Wing for higher damage. And lastly, for the tail, get the Beast Tails or the Puerco Picha. If you want to spend real money on this game or want to try your luck using free vouchers, then you can use the following gacha items from the Fantasy Generator Machine. The same equipment from the Fantasy Generator Machine 2 as they grant additional base and drop EXP when killing mobs. The Nedhog's Poison Fang Head item as it increases damage by 10% and gives plus 5% job EXP from killing monsters. The Frost Masquerade Mask Face item which increases attack significantly. The Dream Move Silk Mouth item for increased penetration or Dusk Veil for more attack and job EXP. The blue Islet Sea back item for additional attack and job EXP. And the Wind Perch Drake or Gut Swing Tail item for more damage. As for pets, you may choose any of the following. So he or Marionette for helping with SP region. The Veruchi Smokey or Jolchus for plus 40 attack. Desert Wolf Baby, Peko Peko or Alice for plus 5% ignore death. Overall, I think the Jiltris is the best pet to have as it does not only increase attack, but also increase physical penetration by 2%. Lastly, here are some tips you need to take note of when farming. Tip number 1. For your auto skill slots, just put an instrument attack or arrow vulcan and Birch's poem to sustain SP. If you have a dancer partner, then replace Birch's poem with Mr. Gold is Rich. Be sure to take stay alert so that you will not move out of the range of your partner. Tip number 2. Using converters will significantly increase the damage against monsters with elemental weakness. Use flame heart for earth element monsters like the orc lady and geographer, or undead element monsters like the dark priest, fairy main, and dulahan. Activate great nature for wind element monsters like punk, carrot, and harpy. Activate rough wind for water element monsters like the phenomena and anolian. And lastly, activate Mystic Frozen for fire element mobs like the Brylight and a Fire Fledgling. Tip number 3. Use items that increase job EXP for faster leveling up. As an example, we have the Pouring Growth Panacea which can be brought from the Tura Assistant. This increases EXP gate by 100% for 1 hour. You may also use the Poriku which increases EXP gain by 100% for 30 minutes. You can use both items at the same time for faster leveling up. Tip number 4. To boost damage, you may eat cooked foods that increase attack and movement speed, such as original will fish steak or Parenteria royal fish steak to get your targets faster. You may also use the new secret recipe Satisfied Feast which gives plus 40 attack and plus 2.5% penetration. Cast away reduction foods like the original will salad and sweet coriander are also good when using instrument attack for faster kills. However, for Arrow Vulcan, it is not recommended since it has a long cooldown. Another use of cooked food is for SP Store. You may consume 999 one-star food for the SP Discharge. And for my last and final tip, you need to invest in your raw attack which I have talked about in my previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, I have the video link down below. Having a huge physical attack will definitely synergize with your skills, runes, cards, and equipment to further enhance your damage. As a bonus tip, element praying cards are also beneficial increasing damage. As an example, if you're using flame heart for farming, you may want to put praying cards on fire damage. Alright, so far we discussed the most recommended stats, skills, runes, equipment, cards, pets, and farming tips for your board to become a minstrel in no time. I hope this guide was helpful in setting up the foundation for your character. I'll be tackling the dancer in a separate video as there are differences in the skills and runes. As for the Minstrel Raging Storm build, I will make a separate guide so stay tuned for that.
Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe button down below. I would love to have you back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.